What's up, y'all? Stead Doogie here with Chapter 7, Part 1 of my Dead Space 2 Zealot Difficulty No Damage Run. Chapter 7 is a pretty long chapter, therefore I've split it up into two parts. Uh, in this first part, we're going to be going through and dealing with uh, kind of psycho AI. Um, I really like this this Chapter 7 bit, especially the, the part with the AI. Um, it reminds me of um, that Stanley Kubrick film uh, where the AI just kind of goes nuts and tries to kill the crew on the space station. But first, we have to go through probably one of the best fights in the game where we're in this elevator that's rising and uh, we're getting attacked by monsters from all sides. This is really where the sound directionality uh, of this game comes into play because you can identify where the enemy is going to show up or where the enemy is um, by where they sound like they are. So if you've got you know 5.1 or 7 point whatever um, surround sound, this is a good place to exercise that. Now this necromorph we're going to roll up on here is sometimes he'll bum rush you, other times not. He didn't make himself visible this time around, but um, sometimes he'll just bum rush you, so be prepared for that if you're going to do your own run. A good weapon to use here is the detonator because it's a one-shot kill. Uh, I didn't use a detonator because this is a no damage. I mean, this is a from uh, beginning run, so... I would have to buy one and upgrade it and blah 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 so I've been saving my money for other things or saving my credits for other things so we're just going to use our um, our plasma cast and we're going to shoot their hands so we're not going to go for the crit spot we're just going to shoot the hand that's holding on to the window and that'll be enough to get him to let go and a couple shots like that will kill him so it's a little more effort in here You also want to move. I'm not doing as much movement, but you're going to see some places where I'm going to move because they will reach in and try to slap you. You got to be prepared for that. It's also kind of glitchy, so one of the reasons you don't want to kill them sometimes is that the body parts will end up inside the elevator with you and block your shots or impede your vision. We will see some of that. See, like right there. Fortunately, he didn't get in the way of that particular shot, but he, this guy's about to attack. So rotating to the right to avoid uh, getting hit there. Backing up there to not get hit because he's still poking his hand in. That one, I just got lucky. That was not skill. That was pure luck on that one. This guy we saw coming, so pretty straightforward, and it's done. Really fun fight. I like that one a lot. But again, it's made it easier if you have the detonator, so in like a new game plus plus run, uh, just get yourself a detonator, detonator, upgrade the fire rate and the reload speed. You don't really need to worry about the damage. But maybe by the time you do like a new game plus plus. Uh, you have enough credits that you can just max it out just because here we're still being uh, conservative in the use of ammo which is why I'm using the fire explosive canister instead of just shooting them. Now I've killed myself in the previous run playthroughs with that canister so I'm uber conservative and creating a ton of space so I don't get killed uh, by the AOE. I'm thinking about doing a new game plus plus no damage run. When I'm done with this, let me know what you think. Now I'm kind of trippy about this particular section because after you kill all the mines, there's one that you can hear the sound of it, but it's not anywhere. So I'm just kind of hyper conservative and concerned that it'll magically show up 
and get me damaged or murdered. So that's why you see I'm just kind of walking on eggshells. There it is. You heard that sound. It sounded like there was one left, even though there was nothing visible. I feel bad for this dude, because this AI has just been shitting him like shit. So we're going to take uh, some pleasure in murdering the, the AI on his behalf. Now that part of the story is... Um, is expressed in text and audio logs. Again, I'm assuming that you guys have played through the game and know the story and you're not watching my content as your first interaction with the game because that would be a shame. You're missing out on all the really scary and surprising stuff. AKA spoilers. Now you're going to see something that bugs the crap out of me because I left a node in this room. I should have gone down the left side. That left side, there's a node on the wall on the right, right before we get to uh, this box right here. Uh, it bugs me. Let it go, Doogie. Just let it go. Woo freaking saw. I love how dude is just taking his time trying to roll up on us like he's going to do something. Get his ass sucked out in the space. I like to get that out of the way. Make sure it doesn't come back in and not cause me trouble later. Now the necromorph, the high speed necromorph, either pops up on the right or the left. So you're gonna do the same thing, you know, if he pops up on the other side, you just um, stasis him and then kill him because he jumps really really far so you don't want to wait for him to roll up on you because his jump distance is ridiculous and you can get hit all right I think that's that for the for the spawns When I, when I did this uh, no damage playthrough, you know, there were still parts of the game that I didn't fully memorize. So this isn't pure muscle memory. I am, there's still discovery, there's still surprises, there's still reactions to things. Like I haven't counted exactly how many enemies spawn. I know they're going to be three for this section, but in that other section, I wasn't sure exactly how many spawn. So we got this guy. See, look at how far he jumped. Like, if he had just hesitated a second, that would have been us. So there's going to be a guy that comes either out of that, that door way on the left or right there. So those are the only two places. Well, there's also a, a panel on the far right or the far left relative to where we're standing now. I don't know how that missed that they can spawn out of and one will spawn out as we uh, ride the lift up. Yeah, right right there. He's going to come out of there. I don't know what the hell I'm looking for. Let's go, Doogie. Keep it moving. Sucker. Go down and get my loot. One of the reasons I wanted, I'm thinking about doing a new game plus plus is because I don't, you don't need to, I won't have to stop for loot or to pick stuff up because we'll have enough credits on hand to just buy everything we need. So it's going to be a faster pace. Now this shit scared the crap out of me uh, the first time I played it because I expected that he would just come into the room. So I was moving uber, uber slowly through this area, just kind of waiting 
uh, for him to show up. No, he doesn't actually show up, but I didn't know that at the time. Now, the upgrade to the rig is not strictly necessary for a no damage run, but I do it anyway because... Uh, I like the, the buffer of the air. There's certain parts in the game where I just kind of hang out in space and I'm not really stressed about how much air I have because I invested in upgrading my air capacity. And once you finish the, the fight, down on the first floor there isn't a lot of action up here but i love how the music cranks it up and makes it feels that there's a lot going on even though there isn't much going on at all now we are going to get somebody jump out of this here but it's not that original necromorph that crawled up the window Trying to be slick and come behind us sucks to be you. I just shocked them for good measure measure because one shot is enough to neutralize them um, because we have a fully upgraded uh, javelin at this particular point. Now listen to the music, how it's hit that high note, you know that that high dissonant tension type note. Now we got a little bit louder right there. This game is really, really well designed. This, I keep saying it, like the sound design in this game is amazing. So it, I think what it is that I like about this, this section with the interaction with the AI is that the AI sounds um, a-emotional, like there is no emotional context what it's doing but when you read the text logs and you listen to the audio logs you can see that it's being vindictive you know so it, it's like it has an emotional um, perspective because it's being vindictive to to um, to the guy uh, that got killed so it's it's not outside the realm of reason that that it has that that capability you know that it has volition it has intent so I, I like that that disconnect between you know sounding as if it it has uh, no intent no purpose no desire no drive but it acts in a malicious way like there proceed with caution as if she's do she's uh looking out for us she's on on our side but she's totally not i love this next bit here because there it's with the two layer of the codes where you get into that secret well i guess it's not a secret because it's kind of printed right on the wall but i really like that little touch you get two nodes out of there and uh the peng statue so you get some pretty good loot coming up, which will allow us to get more nodes and be further along in our capabilities. Which is interesting because, you know, we started out so weak. We started out um, with our hands bound, really, really low on health. Like if they just farted on us, we would have died. I just get so much satisfaction out of the whole shocking and exploding. Like, I don't have to shock them. I could just do the explosion bit. But I do like the holding down and having them be electrocuted and then being blown into bits. Visitor. Main frame containment compromised. Security 
Nobody's coming to save you, AI. Or Anti, I think, is the AI's name. I, and I, I love this. You're going to hear the sound design when it shuts down. I just think it sounds so cool. Playing like a scrub. Sorry, y'all. Like moving pieces. In the new game plus plus run, there's not going to be any of this. It's really just going to, well, if I do do it, I might not, depending on interest. But yeah, it'll be more just kind of oriented to getting things done. So it's like a speedish run because, you know, I'm not really a speed runner. But it'll be interesting to see what happens or how the game plays, I think, uh, when there's no resource constraint. You know, part of the reason why... I make this effort to get all of this stuff is so that I can, by the time we get to the boss phase or the boss chapter, final chapter, everything is maxed out, everything is upgraded, so we can make that part uh, as efficient as painless as possible. So we spend that time up front here, you know, in the first, what, uh, 12, 13 chapters. Picking up everything, stomping everything, mailing everything, opening every box, going through every secret room, every room, every node, so that we can make the last phase the breeze. So what happens when one starts out with pretty much everything maxed out? You know what I mean? that will cause lapses in programming for our safety step away from the circuits it's not for her safety it's for ours you see again manipulative and sounding like whatevs here it is listen to this carefully i love the sound of this fly I love the way that sounds. Her death, her, her death cry. All right, because we're, we're coming. Now, tell me that didn't scare the shit out of you the first time that happened. Sweet Jesus. I'm telling you, man. You cannot play this game with loose bowels. Accidents will happen. I hate these little crawly things because they don't spawn in a predictable well I guess it's semi predictable but like right now where the hell is it you know it's trying to sneak up on you and I pick them up and slam them because they go floating around the world looking like they're alive but they're not and then you don't want to misconstrue the live one with the dead one and have the live one jump you because you thought it was dead so I always pick them up and slam them to remove them from the environment there we go. I think five spawn, four or five spawn. I really should count. All right, so we're coming on towards the end here. I missed, but I made it work. This is why I like the because you, you don't even have to hit him. You just need to get close enough. But it would have been nice to hit him instead of playing like a scrub. Sucks to be you, homeboy. Now, I'm so, you know, greedy for loot. I'm trying to get an angle on him so I can get the loot off of him. Another one's going to spawn here. Yeah, 
Yeah. So once I pick up the loot or attempt to pick up the loot, that'll be the end of uh, of this chapter, which is chapter seven, part one. And then we'll get into chapter seven, part two, and the next one where we go out into space. Looking for loot, checking for loot, no loot found. Oh, loot found. So you won't have to put up with any of that if I do do the new game plus plus run because I won't have to pick anything up. All right, y'all. So that's it for this one. Uh, thank you for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.